In this video, we will compare and contrast security controls and framework tabs. What are security controls? Security controls are parameters implemented to protect various forms of data and infrastructure important to an organization. Any type of safeguard or countermeasure in place that's used to avoid, detect, counteract or minimize security risk to the physical property, information or computer systems or any other assets is known as a security control. Goals of security controls. Security controls protect the IT infrastructure from unauthorized access, email spoofing, denial of service, trojans and other malwares. Security control categories. Security controls are classified into three categories. Technical controls, operational controls and managerial controls. In technical controls, they are the controls in place to set rules for the system software, application software and other security appliances. Whereas for operational controls, they are the controls managed by an individual such as an information security systems officer. In managerial controls, executives such as the chief security officer have control over an entire system in order to make the decisions impacting the security controls. Security controls flow of responsibilities. The chief security officer makes the managerial decisions and tells the information security officer what needs to be done. Once the information security officer receives the directives from the chief security officer, he takes care of the operational aspect and gives detailed instructions to his team of employees to execute the technical tasks. Think of a pyramid. The chief security officer is at the top. The chief security officer makes the managerial decisions at the top and then he tells the information security officer as to what needs to be carried out. The information security officer receives the directives from the chief security officer and the information security officer takes care of the operational aspect. Information security officer gives detailed instruction his team of employees to execute the technical tasks. There are six functional types of security controls. Firstly, there's the preventive security controls. Preventive controls are supposed to be applied before the threat occurs. The goal of preventive security control is to prevent unauthorized access, such as the use of firewall, email filtering and multi-factor authentication. And secondly, there's the compensating security controls. These controls are intended to provide an alternate measure of control. Even if antivirus is disabled, or fails to isolate or quarantine the malware in a system, an intrusion prevention system blocks the suspicious traffic in the first place, acting as a compensatory tool. And moving on, thirdly, there's the detective security controls. These controls are to be applied in case of an active attack. These security controls are utilized to search and lock the management of attack. These controls aid in identifying the activities carried out during the incident and searches for potential intruders. Physical security controls. This control is meant to deter an attacker's physical attacks with the use of security alarms, locks, biometric scanners and CCTVs. Corrective security controls. This security control is used to integrate a recovery focus and preventive approach into the organization. After the incident, incident management team are responsible for implementing the corrective security controls. These controls are in place to fix or undo the damage caused to the IT infrastructure after an incident has occurred. Deterrent controls. Deterrent security controls are intended to discourage the potential attacks. It involves the use of warnings such as the pop-up alerts. NIST Cybersecurity Framework NIST Cybersecurity Framework is a set of guidelines for mitigating or preventing organizational security risks. It's published by the United States National Institute of Standards and Technology based on the existing standards, guidelines and practices. In NIST Cybersecurity Framework, there are five functions. Let's begin with the first function, Identify. Assume you want to understand what is the best practice to carry out the asset management. Then you can refer to the particular document, id.am. 
ID stands for the identify function unique identifier and then the AM stands for the asset management. So if you were to look at ID.AM, you will understand what is the best practice to carry out the asset management. Suppose you want to understand what is the best practice to carry out risk assessment. Then you can simply refer to the particular document ID.RA to know what's the best practice to conduct or carry out risk assessment. Similarly, in the second function protect, if you'd like to learn what is the best way to conduct awareness training, then you can refer to the document PR.AT. Similarly, the remaining functions detect, respond and recover have their own designated documents. Similar to the NIST framework, you can also make use of other information security frameworks such as the ISO 2700 or the Cloud Security Alliance. ISO 2700 Cybersecurity Framework ISO or IEC 27001 specifies the requirements for establishing, implementing, maintaining and continually improving an information security management system within the context of the organization. It's a comprehensive set of controls applicable to all industry sectors. It serves as a management process to evaluate, implement and maintain information security management systems. Cloud Security Alliance. It's the world's leading organization dedicated to defining and raising awareness of best practices to help ensure a secure cloud computing environment. Regulations, standard and legislation. General Data Protection Regulation Act, also known as the GDPR Act. The GDPR is a regulation in European Union law on data protection and privacy. The GDPR is an important component of the European Union privacy law and of the human rights law in the particular Article 8 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. All tech companies must comply with the GDPR Act if they were to operate in the European Union. Due care versus due diligence. What's the difference? Due care can be described as the reasonable care taken in protecting the organization. Whereas due diligence is described as following the practices to maintain the due care effort. Due care is the legal term pertaining to the legal duty of the organization to comply with the standards. Whereas due diligence is the best practices an organization should follow, such as the Computer Security Act. Lack of due care is considered as negligence and legally punishable. Due diligence isn't legally liable. Simply put, due care can be described as the bare minimum an organization has to follow. Whereas due diligence is the organization's best efforts. It's them going the extra mile to follow the best practices. National territory or state laws. Based on the territory, state or nation, there are certain audit checklists an organization has to meet in order to function or carry out their business operations such as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act to protect patient confidentiality. The Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard is another example of such law. It's an information security standard for organizations that handle branded credit cards from the major card schemes. The PCI standard is mandated by the card brands but administered by the payment card industry security standards. 